lot of the classes I have to take for my computer science major are pretty painful, but last term I took a class called CS4 where I was introduced to OCaml and functional programming, which is what this video is going to be about since I think it's a bit unappreciated. So what is OCaml? Short answer, it's a programming language. On its official website, it's described as an industrial strength functional programming language with an emphasis on expressiveness and safety. I think that's a great description. Functional programming is really the key and the mwah, chef's kiss feature of OCaml. In other languages like Python, Java, C++, these are all called imperative programming languages. And in them, the programmer describes a sequence of explicit instructions that the computer should perform in order to solve some sort of task. Whereas in functional programming languages, it's focused on describing the solution to a problem in terms of the evaluation of functions and the manipulation of data structures instead of this sort of sequence of operations. So in functional programming languages, functions are treated as first class values, which means that they can be passed around and manipulated like any other data type. And this is really powerful stuff. Other functional programming languages include Haskell and Lisp. Also, industrial strength, this kind of implies that OCaml can handle really large-scale projects and the demands that come with that, such as performance, scalability, reliability. In real life, I know that OCaml is used by companies like Jane Street in the finance industry to develop trading systems. Um, expressiveness, that means that you can write really concise code for really complicated stuff, which we'll see later. And safety is another really big feature of OCaml. It's known for its strong type system, which means that it catches errors at compile time before the code is even run. So that was a lot. I think a demo is the best way to see the stuff in action. So let's write a function that calculates the value of the Fibonacci sequence at a given position. Okay, recall that the Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where each number is obtained by adding the two numbers that are immediately before it, starting with zero and one. Those two added together are one. One plus one added together is two. 1 plus 2 added together is 3, 2 plus 3 added together is 5, and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and write the code now. So in this code, we define a function called Fibonacci that takes in an integer n as an input. So the function uses an if statement to check if n is less than or equal to 1, and if it is, we return n, and otherwise, we recursively call the Fibonacci function with n minus 1 and n minus 2 as arguments and add the results. Okay, to check that it's running properly, we can go ahead and try it. I'm trying it with 8, and it looks like it returned the correct answer of 21. Very good. What if I told you that there's a more OCaml version to write this code? Okay, so we've written a second version of Fibonacci, and you'll notice that it has no if statements, but rather this sort of matching. So if statements are used in OCaml, but they're not as prevalent as they are in imperative programming languages. What's going on here instead is pattern matching, which is this language construct often used in place of if statements, which allows developers to match values against patterns and execute code based on the match. So what's going on here is that we're passing in n, and then the function asks, is n zero? If so, return zero. Otherwise, if n is 1, return 1. And if n is anything else, what we're going to do is recursively call the function again, passing in n minus 1 and n minus 2 as arguments, and adding the result. For a little bonus, here's another way to write it. Okay, so this is a totally valid and correct implementation. You'll notice that it's basically the previous implementation just in one line instead of multiple. And honestly, to me, it's a little bit harder to understand compared to the previous version. But I just wanted to include this version because functions in OCaml are often written in a very super concise and compact style. And sometimes this means that there's a lot being fit on a single line. While editing this video, I got a bit carried away and I want to show one more version to rewrite this function. Recursion is found in many programming languages, but OCaml uses tail recursion, which is a type of recursion in which the recursive call is the last operation in the function. So a common pattern in functional programming is a main function, which takes in the arguments needed to calculate the final output, and a helper function to perform the actual recursive computation, which is iter in our case. What's different here is we have two accumulators called accumulator 1 and accumulator 2, which store the last two Fibonacci numbers. As before, we basically add up the last two Fibonacci numbers, and you'll notice right here that we call the helper function, and we pass in the position that we're looking for, as well as 0 and 1 to represent the first two Fibonacci numbers in the sequence. 
So the whole point of having this helper function and doing everything tail recursively is that it allows the compiler to optimize the code by reusing the same stack frame for each recursive call rather than allocating a new stack frame for each call. And this overall just prevents stack overflow errors if we have a really, really large N. So yeah, that was a taste of this very distinct style of programming with OCaml. If by the end of this video, you're like, that's cool, but I'm probably not going to use this. That's okay. I always encourage you to explore what resonates with you and your interests, whether it's a specific language like OCaml or whatever. Subscribe for more videos!